Hi everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. Pardon my bare face-ness. I want to bring you this video. I'm very excited about it. I was actually contacted by this company that is my makeup brush set. And they make, I, according to their website, I think they make dupes for a lot of popular makeup brushes, but they have a whole line of brushes that are supposed to be dupes for the Artiste brushes. So they actually sent me a set of 10 of these brushes that are supposed to be like the Artiste brushes. A lot less expensive and I will give you all the details and everything. I will leave a link below so you guys can check these out in more detail but I'm gonna test out all 10 of these brushes and see how they hold up to the Artiste brushes. I will say I only have one of the Artiste brushes. I have the I have the Oval 8 mainly because I just I couldn't justify the money for these. They're very pricey. They are very soft. They feel wonderful. I have a whole review like a first impression review which I will link to this video. So obviously I can't give a complete comparison of like all the Artiste brushes to all their possible dupes, but I can give you a review of the dupes to see if they're good or not. I just can't necessarily compare them all to this, but I can compare these two. This is the biggest size of the my makeup brush set brush. It's a little bit smaller than the Oval 8, and I mean, they look very similar, I will say, at first glance. The Artiste brush, I feel like the handle, it's not heavy at all. I will say it, it looks heavy, but it's not heavy. It's very lightweight. It has like sort of a rubbery part that makes it easier to grip. The My Makeup Brush Set brushes, they don't have that rubber grip. They are lightweight too, but yeah, I mean, I guess they do feel similar. I guess this feels a little bit more solid than this, I guess, but you are spending a lot more money on this. I, I bought this Artiste brush myself and it arrived in a box, a very solid box, so it was all in one piece here whereas the my makeup brush set brushes all came just like they were each wrapped individually in plastic and then in this makeup bag so some of them are a little deformed this one actually was a lot more deformed when i first opened it up and i've kind of managed to work it a little bit so it's a little less deformed but it is shedding a little bit which my artiste brush i don't notice as much shedding. I mean, this is just initial, like I haven't used this yet. And makeup brushes shedding are a huge pet peeve of mine. There is that. There's this one piece here that's driving me crazy that's like long but not coming out. You probably can't see that. They both feel very densely packed. The Artiste brush feels a little softer. They both feel soft, don't get me wrong, like very velvety, but I do feel like the Artiste brush just feeling it does feel a little bit softer. That's just my initial reaction in comparison. I am going to just go through each of these brushes. I'm going to read up on the website as to what the suggested use of each of these brushes is and just, you know, see if these are worth it. See if they're worth the in investment or worth the knockoff price. I don't know if you can buy these individually. I will check the website and get more details about that. You may just have to buy the set, but it's pretty affordable, so. I'm gonna start with the primer. I'm not gonna use any of the brushes for primer because I don't normally use brushes for primer. I'm gonna use my Too Faced Primed and Poreless Pure because it's my favorite primer. Okay, so what foundation shall I use today? I think I will go with a trusty, this is my Too Faced Born This Way foundation, which is just one of my absolute favorites, so I figure why not? Why not go with a favorite to test it out? Okay, now I'm gonna use this like I use the Artiste brush and I'm going to just sort of start in one place and smooth it all over my face and I'm gonna try keeping it flat on the face, like not lifting it up. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now, as I'm pushing this, I felt something make a crackling noise. Like this handle does not feel quite as sturdy as the Artiste brush. Like, I don't think it broke, but I don't notice any like crackly noises or anything when I'm using my Artiste. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm pressing too hard. I don't know, that's possible. This is a little smaller than the Artiste brush. I mean, I like bigger foundation brushes because you can cover more area. However, it is a little harder to get into the crevices, like around the nose and stuff. I don't know if it necessarily feels quite as soft. No, it definitely doesn't. It does not feel as soft as the Artiste. 
Not to say that it feels bad, but it does feel like it pulls on the skin a little bit more. Again, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, it's not like it's like a direct knockoff of it. I just don't know if anything will ever live up to my buffing brush, which I have a whole review on all my foundation brushes. And between my Real Techniques buffing brush and my Beauty Blender, those are kind of like my holy grail foundation combination. If you can see, I mean, it doesn't look streaky or anything, but I just, I think I just prefer the buffing brush beauty blender combination. Just my own personal preference. So I wouldn't say it's a direct dupe of the Artiste brushes, but it's not a bad option. I mean, especially if you're looking for an affordable option. Just for foundation, I mean, I just would prefer my Real Techniques buffing brush and my beauty blender. I could even get by with just a beauty blender, but. But again, I mean, I do think it did a comparable job to the Artiste foundation brush. Okay, I'm gonna go down to, one of the problems is these things aren't really labeled. I went to their website and I'm kind of going by like, they're kind of lettered by size in the picture, but they're not lettered on here. So this is technically labeled as E. It's kind of like a smaller oval kind of thing. And I am going to use this with my Tarte CC corrector on the inner corners of my eyes. Yeah, I'm not getting like a nice smooth line and it is pulling a little bit. So overall, for like an under eye CC corrector. Because I mean the Tarte is thick, so it does have a little bit of a hard time going on. Although I do feel like my <laughs> Real Techniques, this is not sponsored by Real Techniques. I just really love Real Techniques brushes in general. The Real Techniques pointed foundation brush is really what I prefer to use for the Tarte CC. Cream. This did blend it out eventually, but I, do, I don't like tugging around my eyes. That makes me a little nervous. So I'm going to use as far as concealer under my eyes. I'm going to use my Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Concealer. Maybe I'll go in with the next size larger, which would be the D. I don't know if I necessarily have as much control with this. Maybe this is just a little bit too big a brush for using this. I'm kind of just guessing here. But no, I mean, I did smooth it out. Again, I just kind of feel like it tugs a little bit more than I would like. I have not used a brush like this for powder and I'm a little nervous too. So I'm gonna go, just because I'm trying to use all of these brushes, I'm gonna kind of go with the, I guess I'm up to the C, which is a little bit, a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna use my RCMA setting powder. I'm trying not to rub because I never really rub in powder, but I guess it's okay. I'm going to go in with the B brush, which is the second largest. And I'm going to go in with my Too Faced Primed and Poreless powder and go over it. That's not bad. I just feel weird like buffing in powder. It looks good. It looks blended. I mean, I'm just so used to like a big fluffy brush. It does have like these weird like pieces that like, I guess aren't falling out, but they're just like these wonky things that are almost like too long, but yet yeah, they don't just pull out. So they're not just like, I don't know. And they kind of tickle a little bit here and there. I don't know. I guess that probably just goes to the quality. Like they're not, obviously when you do the Artiste brushes, like you're paying for a higher quality is what it is. Okay. What am I going to do next? I'm trying to think of how I'm gonna do brows. Maybe I'll go in with my brow pomade. I don't really have a brow powder that I'm using right now. So I guess we're just gonna try my Anastasia <laughs> dip brow pomade, which I could seriously regret. Going in with sort of the smallest pointed, I guess you could say. It's not bad, actually. I mean, for pomade, pomades are just not my favorite way of applying brow product. I like a pencil and like a brow gel, but this isn't bad, I have to say. It's a little messy, even if I have to clean it up. For all, not bad. I'm gonna go in with my concealer brush and just touch that up a little bit. Works pretty well for brows, I have to say. I'm gonna do some blush. I'm gonna do my Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush and Exposed. I'm gonna use the, cause I usually like a big fluffy brush for my blush. I'm gonna use the sort of second biggest. I don't know if 
if it's my favorite for applying blush. Oh, okay. That didn't look as bad in the mirror, but that's getting it a little bit too, a little bit too concentrated. I like my blush much sheer, so not liking it for applying a blush. Personal preference, but yeah. I'm gonna try a contour. I'm gonna go in with the next size down. And I'm gonna go in with my Tarte HD blush in taupe, which has kind of become my new favorite contour shade. It's a little awkward to do powder, but it is blending it in very seamlessly, so I will give it that. I don't know. It's not bad. I just, I, I don't know if I love it as a contour. That type of brush for a contour, I suppose maybe if I had gone a size down, maybe I would have gotten a little bit more defined contour but I don't know not not in love okay I'm going to what am I gonna do with my eyes I'm gonna go as a base and I'm just gonna use my fingers for this I'm gonna go with my Maybelline bad to the bronze now I'm gonna go in I'm gonna go with my Urban Decay Naked palette I'm gonna take this sort of this is the smallest of the like oval shapes and I'm gonna go in with sidecar I feel like this is a little awkward. I definitely would want more of an oval brush for this, for like the whole lid color, but this just doesn't feel small enough, even though it's the smallest of the oval shades, so. Okay, so my battery died and I had to recharge it, so I'm back to finish my makeup. I left off with my eyeshadow. Next, I'm gonna go in with a crease shade. I think I'm gonna go in with Buck right here, and I'm gonna use this sort of narrow brush right here. This is the biggest of the narrow brushes. And I'm gonna kind of go, okay. Probably should have brushed that off. Yeah, I don't know if I like this as like a crease brush. I don't know if it's that it's too big or, I don't know, I guess I just don't find that it has a lot of control. I'm not really liking that. I mean, it does blend pretty well, so maybe the key was it just had too dark a color. I'm not as crazy about that. I'm gonna kind of try to go in with just my MAC blending brush to kind of just buff that out a little bit. Not bad, just, I don't know. Not my favorite brush for getting in the creases. I'm gonna switch to, cause I'm gonna try liner, and I'm gonna actually try to do like a powder and just sort of line my lower lash line with powder. And I'm gonna go in with my Tartlet palette into the shade Fashionista, which is a really nice black shade. And I'm going in with the middle of the long shaped brushes and go along the lash line. I mean, maybe for like, if you were going for a smoky eye, it definitely makes it smoky. It's not gonna give you like a nice fine line. It works better for like, if you're doing a smoky eye, I think, cause it's gonna definitely smoke it out. I'm gonna try it like under, like on the lower. Again, it definitely is more of a smokier effect than if you want like a real defined line. If you want a real defined line, you're gonna have to go in with more of a pointed brush, so. Again, this could be me too. I mean, it's just, you know, how I'm used to applying makeup and I wouldn't swear that I'm doing this exactly correctly. One thing I've been wanting to try, and this is the smallest brush right here, more of a round brush. I'm gonna go in, I think with Sin. I'm back in my Naked palette again. I'm gonna go in with Sin, and I'm gonna try to use this as an inner corner, inner corner highlight here. Not getting as much control as I thought I would. Okay, there we go. I don't know why that side just wasn't working, but this side is working, all right. You just have to kind of just dot it on. Like I have like way more highlighter on this side than I do on this side, which I'm gonna have to even out a little bit, but to dot it out on very, very gently. I'm going with my smallest of the oval brushes to do a highlight. I'm gonna go in with Becca Moonstone and just try to get like a hint of highlight. I mean, you know, it, it works. I feel like any brush can really kind of get that nice highlight. I'm gonna do some mascara. Okay, lip product. I was going to try this one last brush that I have not tried yet, which is basically it's a round oval brush, very similar to this one that I use as an inner corner highlight, but it is a little bit longer. I'm just gonna go in with a lip liner right now. This is my MAC Soar. 
I might go in with my Amore Matte Lip Cream in Adorable. I wanted to use this with like a, like a liquid lipstick, although this is probably going to totally ruin the brush. Why the heck not? Smells so good, I gotta say. I don't usually like lip brushes, but I gotta say, it's going on very smooth, very easy to define, very natural lip look. I like it. All right, so now that I've done my makeup, finally, it's taken me all day. To be totally honest with you, I don't necessarily think they're as good as the Artiste brushes. And the Artiste brush, I have to say, is not my hair all end all. Like, I don't use this every day. And to be honest with you, like, Real Techniques brushes are my absolute favorite brushes, and they're affordable. So I actually am not usually a fan of high-end brushes. I'm usually more of a fan of the affordable brushes, but I don't think these are necessarily as good as the Artiste brushes. I think if you are just sort of a recreational makeup user, you just want something to play around with, something inexpensive, I think these could be fun, you know? I mean... A fun thing to play around with especially if you're like a teen or something who is really getting into makeup I think these could be a good option but if you're like a hardcore makeup user and you're rough with your brushes and stuff these just don't feel durable enough to last a long time so again I do think these could be good for some people but overall they're not direct dupes for uh, the artiste brushes and I don't think that they're going to be as durable and I don't think that they are as soft. I mean, I definitely think there's a reason why these are a lot more expensive than these. So overall, that's my review. If you guys have tried either of these, the Artiste brushes or the My Makeup Brush Set brushes, let me know. Let me know your opinion. Leave in the comment section below. If you have any questions or anything that I haven't covered with these brushes, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. I, you know, hopefully will try to answer your questions. If you guys have any, you know, video requests, recommendations, anything that you would like me to review or find dupes for, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you join me next time. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. Today I am talking about one of my favorite high-end products ever. It is the Hourglass Ambient Light Powders. Oh my goodness, they're amazing. They're pricey and I don't like recommending products that are really pricey unless they're absolutely worth it. So I have to tell you, they're worth it people. Absolutely worth it. I think I have all of them. I might be missing one or two, I'm not sure, but I have most of them. I wanted to try on a different one every day and film it so I could give you sort of my impression of the shade. You can kind of see it on me, see it on my skin tone, see how it works. Some of them I actually like better than others.